here on the Truth Mission today. <laughs> I'm no superstar, I'm a regular guy. Don't smoke regular, give me the lie, the lie. I'm no competitive guy, this is my life, I'm a kid to God, the guy. I'm a kid to God, this is my life, I'm a kid to God. I'm a kid to God. I'm no superstar, I used to want to be DMX. Yo, yo, what's the deal? Ill Butter, born in the gutter, came from his daddy, but raised by his, well, actually both of them, but what's the deal? What's the deal? Good to be with you guys here today. All things start in the name of the creator. Doesn't matter whether you call him a law. Doesn't matter whether you call him Jehovah. Doesn't matter whether you call him whatever you to refer to the most high as. We're all here as the first interfaith discussion, which is in search of God. Can we get a round of applause for that? And we're actually, uh, I was about to say filming here, that was eventually, right? We're actually doing this show on location. I just so happened to be at my son's baseball practice this morning, man. And, uh, yo, the show goes on. You know what I'm saying? I think it gives you a different perspective when you change uh, venues, when you change locations. And uh, we're glad to be here. I'm really excited about the show. I got a friend of the show. I call him a friend of the show. He hasn't been on the show yet, but he has immediately become one of my friends. You ever meet somebody and just kind of like click? You're like, wow, you know, great soul, great spirit. Um, his name is Terrence Lamont Frederick, and he, he's coming out with a book. Well, actually, he's already released a book, and the book is hype. I've been reading it. Wisdom Collections, the scribal records of a modern sage, or also known as the Sage Chronicles. And, man, he's a good brother, man. He's a good brother, and I'm going to call him up in just a few uh, moments here, and you know, let let him talk about what he got going on, and we really appreciate him coming on the show. So, how's everybody feeling, man? As a matter of fact, before we do it, let's just say a formal prayer. We thank you, Creator, for giving us the opportunity to come together in your name, to listen and to and get inspired by positive words. There's so much negativity in this world, and we just need something to look up to. We need someone to pull up to, and you are that. And when, just as the sun comes up in the sky, you you're, raise us and you get us up out of bed and we appreciate it. And yeah, man, we're going to get busy today. We're going to get busy today. I'm looking over at my wife here. She crafts, right? You know, and uh, right now she's working on some cross stitch. And it's awesome to look at her, man, because she's such a creator. So as I endeavor to do the things that I do. You know, I get a lot of inspiration from her. And, you know, it's always that man, woman, undercurrent thing going on. But she does inspire me, man. She really does. She's a hard worker. But, yeah, how are you guys feeling today, man? I hope you guys are waking up on a Saturday. You know, it's interesting because, you know, waking up is an interesting concept because most people would rather slumber or rather get up on their own time. It's not something that you necessarily want to do, you know, until you get into the habit of doing it. You know, many people may not say to themselves, hey, man, I want to wake up early or maybe even on a weekend or on your day off. But it's something that if you push through it, then you feel the benefits. And, you know, I wanted to kind of before we get a chance to talk to Terrence, talk about that, you know, doing the things that you don't want to do that ultimately you feel good about it afterwards. It's just like exercising. You can meet a person who is in the habit of exercising, and they'll say, hey, I love to exercise, because they know the feeling, they know what's coming from it. 
but they also know what the price is to pay it. You know what I mean? They're going to get tired. You have to put forth effort. You're going to have to push through it. Same thing with the practice. It's funny because I was talking to another one of my kids and they made uh, a comment about, you know, my unnatural willingness to go to the to these practices. It's like, oh, man, if it's not the first thing, you know, you don't get up and say, hey, man, you know what? Of all the things that I could do today, I want to go and watch a bunch of kids play in the field and throw around the ball. They're not even playing the game. They're practicing. But you do it. You push through it anyway because you know that by pushing through it, what's on the other end of it is worth it. Let's think about when, you know, uh, we were watching the Children of Israel. No, Children of Israel. We were watching, what was the name of the, uh, the cartoon? Uh, Prince of Egypt. The Prince of Egypt. And they got to the point in the Prince of Egypt, you know, the part of the story that everyone knows about when um, he, Moses led the Israelites to the to the uh, to the Red Sea, and um, they didn't want to leave. Well, they did want to leave at that point because they were persecuted, but they were they were in haste. They were moving, even though they were moving towards the Promised Land, they didn't know what to expect. But they were running. You know, they had they had uh, Pharaoh at their heels. So I'm sure that that's not the way that they wanted to spend their evening running from the Egyptian soldiers. But when it got them to the other side, you know, and, and most of the time you don't know where it's going to lead. You know, at least runners and in this practice, you kind of say to yourself, well, he practices, he gonna get, he's going to get better. I run, I'm going to get a good exercise. But hey, God led them up to the, to the Red Sea. And they had no idea what to expect. Moses didn't even know what to expect. You know, it wasn't until they were willing to come out of what they had been accustomed to, even though they had been being persecuted, it still was what they were accustomed to. They had found a way to live with it. There's almost when people, you know, people talk about atrocities like the slave trade, or even when you talk about things like the Holocaust. You're like, how could people live through it? And it was as horrible as it was. They learned to live or get through the day. So sometimes getting out of that and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to just get through the day. I'm going to challenge myself to be uncomfortable and not knowing the result. And something, you know, God comes out with something great. So that being said, you know, I'm not going to talk you all to death anymore <laughs> yet. I'm going to call up my man, Terrence Lamont Frederick, get him on the phone and, uh, and talk a little something. So let's see. Uh, seats. Hey, man, we got it. You know how we do it, man. We use it's the, the, the same technology you got in your pocket. What's in your pocket? Let's see. It's a good brother, man. Hello, Terrence. What's going on? How you feeling, man? Hey, hey you know, it's I'm fun. You, yeah, you jumping. You got that kind of, man. If I had a voice like you, man, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling today, man? I'm good. I'm good, brother. How you feeling? I'm feeling well. You know, I appreciate it. And I'm thankful for, to have the opportunity, man, to chop it up with you once again and, uh, Man, you know, I'm just as I was telling the people on the show today, man, I feel like I, I met an instant friend. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you got you got a, sim a similar spirit, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. as I was preparing everybody for the show, you know, I was telling them that you know you're a friend of the show. I hadn't gotten the opportunity to get you on yet, but it doesn't matter, man. You know, from the moment I met you, I, I knew that you know. Is somebody I was going to chop it up with going forward. We wanted to talk to you about your what, your, your piece of work that you've you put put out, Wisdom Collections, the scribal records of a modern sage. You know, also, yeah. <laughs> also known as the Sage Chronicles. That's the deep title, man. You got to tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, man, the Sage Chronicles. So, uh, Wisdom Collections is um, it's the second book within a uh, a series called the Sage Chronicles, and really what it is is it's like if you think about the um, 
the character in the Bible, um, Solomon. Right. And, you know, he said he was known for speaking all of these these songs and these and these proverbs he was known for they counted them it was in the thousands and so wisdom collections is basically any type of knowledge that i've gathered from other people from from the sages of of times past modern day wise people elders um peers you know just wherever i have gathered wisdom i'm, I'm collecting it so it's saying collections because I'm treasure hunting, and I, I believe that's what life is about, uh, treasure hunting and, and finding those lessons that are that are eternal. And so for me, I said, I need to go ahead and document these things, put it down, scribe it out. Wow. Because I want to be able to leave something in the earth um, that's going to keep on blessing people after I leave. So that's that's the real intent of it. So the first one was called Watching From My Post. Right. And um, and the second one here is Wisdom Collections. So 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 since, you know, that that preceded this one, tell me, let's touch on that for a moment. Tell me how the, the first group of collections, how did that come about? What what inspired you to start there? Well, what it was, was I, I thought about the fact that I was putting out a lot of posts on social media, Twitter, you know, Facebook, and I'm putting out all this good stuff you know yeah. everybody who puts out stuff who feel like our stuff is good yes sir but then but then i got inspired to collect 10 years worth of posts and, and things that i see i was seeing that people were resonating with and i said let me go ahead and g- gather that and as i started gathering and going through it I said, this is a book right here right and i think that um what really inspired me because what i like to do is also is always model out something that I believe um, other people can walk in. And, right. and I'm like, you know, Facebook has been holding books inside of, you know, that that we put out in fragments. Wow. But if we take the, the effort to gather that stuff and, and, and bring it together, we can see we really, a lot of us already have our book or we already have um, some kind of script for a movie or something. We have stuff that we have documented. Right. We just don't know where it's at. So, that watching from my post was it was that project that I it took about about six months to get it all together. Okay. And that that idea of watching from my post is one of my um, ideas about who I am as a watchman. Right. And, you know, the watchmen stand on the watchtower uh, and they stand on posts. And so it was like you know I'm watching from my post and, and doing it like that. So that one was a good one. It had you know it has a lot of different topics. It's not just one thing. I'm really just chronicling all kind of different commentary on uh political stuff uh philosophy theology just you know whatever comes to mind whatever interests me really and then it's putting it back out for the people yeah that's very dope and, and, and it's interesting because you said that you know we're, we're putting out you know as you know we all do facebook or if we don't do facebook we might do instagram but most of us are on social media we're putting out our thoughts in social media, but they, and you and I talked about this before, they kind of hit your, uh, your, your stream. They kind of come in and they kind of go. And you said that we all have the power. We've all given away books. Talk to me about your decision to self publish, to be, be in the fact, Hey, we're, we're already doing this stuff. Then you decided, Hey man, I'm going to take it upon myself to self publish. Tell me about that decision. Well, yeah. So, so whenever, First of all, I never wanted to be, I'm not one of those people that I just grew up um, real interested in being a writer or being an author, that kind of thing. So that was never um, a goal of mine. It was just that I began to start using it therapeutically. Just I just wanted to get some stuff out and say some things. But then I started recognizing that when I would go to places to speak, because I do, you know, public speaking, teaching, and people would be like, do you have anything or do you have you know, do you have more on this topic? Right. And I realized that I didn't have anything to give them, something that they could work with once I left. Wow. And we know that people, when you know, whenever we encounter something, it's, we're, we're only going to remember just a little portion of that. And then everything else, we're going to forget, you know. Right. You know, even if it's one thing that st- stood out, but if there was a way that I could reproduce and um, be more impactful, Right. And use it as a tool, something that kid, people can work with and, and vibe off of for a while. Then I felt like it was.